for today's video, and, and I are going to be telling you the biggest rejections of our life. What a fun video idea. Shane just presented this to me and was like, so what are your biggest rejections? <laughs> it was more difficult for Hannah than you might think. It was. She's just been wildly successful from birth until now. And so... Uh, I didn't... I was... Okay. The reason for that, truly, is because I uh -huh. swam a, a ton. Trying not to use bad language. I swam a ton. I just swam my entire life yeah. all the time. And yeah. I had nothing, no time for anything else. So I didn't really do any other endeavors that failed because I was just swimming all the time. And then like your academics, you were always very successful. So like no failures there. No. And then when we like began our professional career together, that's been just sort of came together. Pretty successful. <laughs> So I haven't really had to, you know, but I, I, I have my three rejections there. I had to dig deep. <laughs> they were painful. And now we're going to talk about them. All right. Who should you have first? You or me? Should we flip a coin? I don't have a coin Please. on me. <laughs> oh, man. All right. You go first. Okay. I'll go first. Hello. Hannah's biggest rejection, number one. Number one. I'm going to go in age order. So this is the youngest. I was about nine years old. And I, for me, tried out for a play that my summer club was putting on. What's a summer club? It's a thing. It's not really a thing here. It's a thing in Connecticut, at least. And I was on, like, my summer club swim team. I think it's a thing out east. Oh. It like you paid a monthly membership and mine wasn't like one of the fancy summer clubs. Like there are ones that are like thousands and thousands of dollars. We paid a membership for the summer that was like, I don't actually know what it was, like two hundred dollars for the summer. Where was it? Like just it was like ten minutes from my house. But at what? Like a... it's a building that had a ballroom, like a stage and a, a thing, and then underneath was a snack bar. There were locker rooms. They had a tennis court. But it wasn't like a country club. No, not a country club. That's the what I'm talking about when it's like more expensive. Uh -huh. This was a summer club. It was just that? And there was a pond where I used to catch frogs. <sighs> it was just that. It's a pool, a tennis court, <laughs> sounds, a snack club, sounds or a snack bar, and this stage. And they had, had like activities for kids. Okay. Adults also used it for tennis, but it wasn't like a fancy tennis. Like my friend went to one where you had to wear white. Like mine wasn't like that. Yeah. Mine was like, and mine didn't have a restaurant. Mine had a snack bar. <laughs> so I'm just saying, like it was a very casual vibe. All right, all right, yeah, and yeah. that's kind of important because, you know, <laughs> when I tried out for this play, it's a summer club play. Like it's not yeah. big leagues. It's not like being taken too serious. It is about the least impressive play I could have tried out for. <laughs> like it, it's almost like I went to a camp and I tried out for my camp's play. Uh -huh, it yeah. was that. Uh -huh. And it was uh, Wizard of Oz. That was the play. And I very boldly and very bravely sang Somewhere Over the Rainbow on the stage for my audition. So were you auditioning for, is that Dorothy? I don't know what, what I was auditioning. I don't know. I don't think you actually said like what you were auditioning for. I think you just had to sing on stage. But you had your eyes set on Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie and say I wasn't expecting to be cast as Dorothy. Although I was nine and I think there were kids that were like 17 trying out. So... <laughs> So unfortunately for me, they apparently were not impressed by my audition, oh. and I did not get the role of Dorothy. I was given a non-speaking role as a flying monkey, <clears throat> and my only job was at one point to run across the stage in a little winged costume. <laughs> they gave you a non-speaking role. They were like, not only was your song... Not good not enough good. to be Dorothy. You, you shouldn't even speak you shouldn't on stage. Speak. You get to be a flying monkey. And I think I had to like make my own costume. <laughs> and I just had to run across the stage. You know what? Maybe acting wasn't wasn't that hard for you. I did a second play with them. I wasn't discouraged. I did another one that was like a skit and I got a I got a role for you got that a one. Speaking role? Well I got like an ensemble role where uh, we all sang the song together. <laughs> it is New Year's Day. And we are kicking off a brand new year with HelloFresh. Yep. We are going to make 
ricotta tomato ravioli with toasted panko plus lemony squash and parsley. I will be taking all of the toasted panko, uh-huh. pouring it down my throat uh-huh. because that sounds amazing. Kick off the new year with HelloFresh's simple recipes and fresh pre-portioned ingredients that help limit meal prep time and cut back on trips to the grocery store. HelloFresh offers so many recipes to choose from each week to help you break out of your recipe rut. Our favorite thing about HelloFresh is how easy it is. They offer a wide variety of quick and easy recipes including 20 minute meals, easy cleanup, and low prep options. HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients mean there's less prep for you and less wasted food. Oh, let me see it. Yum. Oh, can I smell? <laughs> oh. All right, we're going to tell you about our special offer, and then we are going to eat. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code SquirmyAndGrub16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Again, go to HelloFresh.com and use code SquirmyAndGrub16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. That sounds like everyone at the camp had that role. But I was I was really upset when I didn't get a role, and I was really nervous to sing on stage. That was my only time ever singing on stage. That was brave of you. Yep, and it didn't yeah. go, like, I didn't... That's okay. I was expecting, like, a Hannah Montana type thing, you know, like a Disney Channel thing where, like, I sing on stage and then I'm, like, and contacted some, <laughs> some by a Hollywood agent. Got it into stardom, yeah. <laughs> but that did not happen for nine-year-old me. <laughs> no. My first rejection, uh, mine all occurred, like, around the same time, which is, like, ten-ish years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so you were like 20 in college? I was 20, and my blog that I had been writing was like blowing up. So I was getting a lot of opportunities coming to me, and you know, I was, felt like I was living the dream. Like it was amazing. Um, and the first really big thing that happened was a publisher from New York City, like a legit publisher, reached out to me a few months into me writing my blog. So I might have had 100,000 followers, which was amazing. Um, but it, ha- it wasn't like real big yet. Um, and the publisher was like, hey, we saw your blog. We love the stories that you're writing. We would love to do a book with you. And I didn't believe it. I was like, wow. I, you know, I, I was studying writing in college and now I had like a book offer and everything was just amazing. Couldn't believe it. Um, So I wrote that and I was like, I would love that. Like I cannot believe you're giving me this opportunity. Uh, What do you need me to do? And they were like, well, um, just for like, you know, the sake of doing our due diligence, submit a book proposal that outlines what you would want your book to be about. And so I worked on that for a few months, and or weeks, I guess, and submitted it to them. They wrote back and said, never mind. <laughs> Not nice. Just, just, and it was brief. It was like, oh, you know what? Uh, we're going to go a different direction. Thank you. Sorry. Bye. For you. Oh. Oh. You mean I'm not meant to be a writer. <laughs> That's so sad. How long was it until you got your actual book deal from someone else? I then spent like a semester, or maybe a whole year, uh, working on a much better book proposal. Was your and book proposal bad? Probably. Yeah. Bad, I, yeah. <laughs> I, probably it was horrible. Um. <laughs> Because I hadn't written a whole lot yet. Yeah. Like, from that from that rejection to when I actually wrote my first book, um, I wrote a ton more yeah. about my life, and none of that had formulated in my brain yet for the True. first book proposal. So probably like a year later was when I got a real uh, offer from a, another publisher. First book. Offer. Denied. Rejected. Rejected. All right. All right. My next one is when I turned 16, I wanted to get a job, like a part-time job. 
uh, over the summer and my friend got a job as a lifeguard at our pool where we practiced every day. Very convenient. We spent a lot of time there anyway. Easy job. Bunch of my friends got them. All at that pool? It's a no-brainer. All at that pool. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody that I knew worked there. So I applied. I got an interview. I went in. I interviewed with these two, like, 25-year-old maybe boys that worked there. Uh, Like, I don't even know. They could have been, like, 17. I have no idea. I was 16. I I don't know. They, They were, like, older. But it was weird. It was two of them that interviewed me. The questions were very basic. Like, are you certified? Can you swim? Yeah. I was like, yes, I'm certified. Uh, But then they asked me other questions. Like, I remember them being like, what's your biggest weakness? Like, they did the stupid interview questions that you're supposed to do. (laughs) And I was like, definitely going to get this job. All of my friends have it. And I was never called back. Just never heard back. Didn't get the job. Wasn't even notified. Why did they think that you were not... Qualified to be a lifeguard. Lifeguard material. I want to know what your answers were that freaked them out enough. I know. To just not call me back. They were like, we cannot have that girl. Okay, Everybody well. else got hired. Like, after me. It wasn't like they were full. Like, all of my other friends continued to get hired. And I was like, are you literally kidding me? But I didn't get the job. So I worked at Kohl's instead. Well, that's it's fine. Arguably, more, well, no. No. Lifeguard's way better. Lifeguard would have been way better. You can just sit there. <laughs> maybe maybe when they said what's your biggest weakness you were like sometimes like I'll see someone drowning and I just won't care yeah sometimes I, I just, just like will. it you know <laughs> no I gave very you know I was nervous it was my first ever job interview I'm sure I just gave like brief regular answers yeah I it was they should have it, it was I was wronged it was not my fault we should find them yeah. Find the people they probably that, still work there. I could go find them right now. Like, I know who they are. You like, should go back now and apply. Because then I continued to swim at that pool every day. I saw those two men every day <laughs> for the next four years. So I say we go back and see if you can get a job now. I probably wouldn't. I probably would be denied again. <laughs> All right. My next rejection um, happened again in like the early days of my blog and, you know, things like public things taking off for me and the people from TED, TEDx, like the the speech giving program thing, reached out to me and they were like, hey, we would love for you to give a TEDx talk in San Diego. And this is like the height of TED Talks. When oh, it yeah. Was like this is like the a thing. big deal to get yeah. a TED talk. Um, they were like, we're having an event in San Diego, and we found your story. We think that it's great. Why don't you fill out this form, and we'll review what you would speak about, and then we'll bring you out to San, uh, San Diego. Couldn't believe it. Told all my friends and family. I'm I was offered a TED talk. Like, couldn't believe it. I filled out the form with what I would speak about. Had to give. All kinds of details. I thought my speech was very cool, full of humor, and just real life, you know, real life of lessons. <laughs> Send it in, and I hear back from them. We don't, we're, we're moving in a different direction. You've not been selected. They didn't like your speech. No, they didn't like it. Um, and I wasn't given that chance to amend it in any way. Oh it was just, oh, we're not actually gonna have you for this event. Wow. And so that has become kind of a running joke in my family. Um, that They'll bring up my offered and then revoked TED Talk. Because uh, I, I made a really big deal of it. Like I told everyone. That's I'm go- horrible. I'm going to San Diego uh, for a TED Talk. That's the worst part of that story. I know. That was my, like, this is, I'm getting off the point here, but if I've learned anything in the last 10 years, it is to not announce things, yeah. like successes, mm-hmm. before they happen. 100%. Don't, like, tease them. Yeah. Don't let anyone know that anything's happening yep. until the until it is sure. contract has been signed. Yeah. Uh, because more totally. often than not, you... That's happened with our channel, too. You know, uh-huh. things just fall through. Yeah. <laughs> 
someone drops the ball. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's yeah. So yeah, I was denied for a TED talk. Wow. And I was never offered another. Poor you. Sad me. All right, my final rejection. This isn't so much a rejection. Like yours, someone is actively rejecting you. <laughs> Mine is a, this one's like a personal failure. A rejection of the self. This one is like, I just failed. I guess it's a failure. Um, yeah, they go hand in hand, I think. I think it was around the same time as the lifeguard job interview. Like I was 16-ish. And uh, the, the big swim meet that everyone wanted to qualify for was Y Nationals. And all of my friends started qualifying at around the same year, like when we turned 16, we were all old enough, fast enough, whatever, to qualify for this meet. And the the first year that I think like a couple of my friends qualified, I really wanted to make it also. And <laughs> everyone made it at this like end of season meet. I think it was like seniors, some meet. Uh, and I wanted to make it in the 100 breaststroke. That was like my closest event. And this was really like the only chance. Like after seniors, either your season is done or you made Y Nats and you keep practicing. So it was all down to this meet. I had the hundred breaststroke, and then and that's like your event, right? Yeah, that was like my event. Yeah. I was the one that I was closest in. It was the one I wanted to make it in, the one I liked. So I swam it, and I missed the cut by like point one, oh. like a tenth of a second. Oh. But I had another chance because you can time trial an event. Like there's a certain number of time trials. I think you can do like two or three. It was something like in one day um, or maybe in like the two days you can do one each day. So the first day I did the 100 breaststroke time trial, missed it again by like 0.5 oh, no. or 0 0.05, sorry, <laughs> like 0 0.05. Uh, I remember that the cut, I think this is like, it was like a 108, uh, 89 and I got a 108.92 oh. or something like that. So then I was like, okay, I have one more chance to time trial it again the next day. Like I was dedicated. I did this over and over again. Impressed. I did it again and I missed the cut by 0.01. Oh no. I <laughs> missed it by the smallest amount that I could have missed it by. 0.01. You got so close. Yes. I was one one hundredth of a second away. Oh. And I didn't make it. Wow. So I had to wait for the next season to try to make, and then I made it. So that you, was oh, great. you made it the next. Season? I made it the next, the next oh, season, but still. This rejection has a happy end. There. <laughs> See, that's kind of Hannah's deal. She's like, well, I was rejected, but then I succeeded. Well, that was months <laughs> later. Months later, I was rejected for several months before I finally qualified. <laughs> well, that had to be tough. That that yeah. three day attempt that failed. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I honestly, I remember that I wasn't really upset because I tried so many times and I was like, that honestly was the best yeah. I could have done. Like yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't devastated because I was like, well, that's good. I tried. <laughs> All right. What's your final rejection? My final rejection is another professional endeavor. Um, Good for you for, you know, plugging away through all of these. <laughs> well, this, I mean, this really gives to show you, you know, you can have moments of failure yeah. in your life, moments of rejection, and they do not need to define your future. Yeah. Because, um, like, when I was rejected for my first book, I could have easily been like, well, I'm not meant to be a writer, and yeah. moved on to something else. Who knows what my life would be like yeah. had I made that choice. Anyway, uh, I, over the years, the last 10 years, have tried three times to get the attention of Ellen DeGeneres. Now, this was all before kind of all the bad stuff about Ellen came out. Yeah. Um, you remember the days when like appearing on the Ellen show? was like the pinnacle yeah, of success. Literally. Like careers were made by being invited onto her show. Yeah. And over the years I have organized three different Three? Uh huh. <laughs> this is before I knew you. Oh yeah. Three different social media um campaigns. Campaigns. Like with hashtags that I made up to get Helen Ellen, Ellen's attention, um, and all I wanted was to make her laugh. Like I thought Ellen was really funny, and I wanted her to know about me and like tell her some jokes and hopefully make Ellen laugh. And I wanted to 
career boost that it was to be on the Ellen show. Uh, first she failed, like, horribly, never heard anything. The third the one... The third one I knew you for. Yeah. I think it was six years ago when we met. Like, uh-huh. it was right in the beginning, but I remember this happening. And I, I did it around one of my books. Like, tell me Strangers out. Assume. Yeah. It, it must have been that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Wait, no. It might have been my kid's book. Oh, okay. yeah. I was going to say, because Strangers Assume was, like, yeah. three years ago. There's I no think, way. I think it was my kid's book. Um, I did this whole big campaign where I, like, had... Thousands of people treat her. It must have been so annoying for them, uh, for their like Ellen social media. But it was all about like my kids' but and like lessons about disability. Wouldn't that be great to have on your show? Yeah. I get a call from an Ellen producer, friend of a friend, knew somebody, told them about the campaign. They saw it. They called me. An Ellen producer. Yep. I remember me telling you. Yes. I was like, it worked, it worked, it worked. Uh-huh. They um, asked all sorts of questions. They interviewed me. They asked me to send them my books, which I did. Yep. Mailed them out, like, overnight shipping. And then I held my breath, and I waited. And a day went by, nothing. I emailed that contact. And I was like, hey, just like, did you get the books? What's up? Nothing. Didn't hear, didn't hear, didn't hear. I never even got officially rejected. So it's now been <laughs> five years, probably. <laughs> There's still a chance. There's still a chance. That you are in the queue. Because I've never... <laughs> I, is it a show like over now or something? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, never heard that. Something about me didn't make the cut. No. And uh, I was never invited on Ellen. What the heck? I know. I feel like it'd be great Ellen material. They see someone juggling like pineapples and they're like, we need that guy on the show. <laughs> but they wouldn't let you on the show? I know. I guess no. Who are you? Probably because they can't dance. They like dancing on that show. And I'm not. That's 100% it. That's yeah, it. that's definitely why. Definitely why. <laughs> so that was my, my rejection. Wow. But I'm not going to let it upset me. Not six gonna, six rejections you just heard I'm about. I'm not thinking about it. Wow. I'd love to hear your rejections. Yes, yes, please <laughs> let us know. Make us feel better and put all of your biggest rejections in the comments below. I feel like more are going to start coming back to me now that we talked about this. Yeah, you know, probably. Put some that I've repressed, maybe. This will be a new series. <laughs> Our failures. <laughs> Memories of times we failed. All right, everyone. That's all for today. Goodbye. Bye.